Right now, companies are investing millions in teams of developer advocates to promote their tools and build a user community. But there's one big problem. It's easy to feel the impact of developer relations and DevRel teams as a community member, but it's hard to measure that impact as a business. How do you prove that this investment is worth it? In this video, I'm gonna give you a brief intro to developer relations and evangelism and tell you how some DevRel teams are starting to prove their business impact. So whether you're a community member, a community leader, or a developer advocate yourself, I think you'll find this interesting. Let's talk about it. Hi, it's me from the future. Subscribe to my channel if you feel like it. In this video, I use the term DevRel and Developer Advocate interchangeably. So please excuse me for taking that liberty. Enjoy. DevRel, Developer Advocacy, Community. This part of the industry has been growing in the last five years a lot. Companies have been starting to realize that an active and engaged online community can contribute to more of their tools being used or easier support for their customers, making people feel included like they're a part of a real community and not just using some tool that they buy. So startups, tech firms, and even open source projects have these community advocates to evangelize their products and connect with the people that are going to use them. This is often done via online platforms, but how do you prove that views, likes, and forums are converting to more product consumption and less friction for your users? According to a report from CMX, only about 10% of businesses are really able to measure the impact that community has from an ROI perspective. And the rest of them know that it's useful enough to invest in, but they have a difficult time figuring out exactly how beneficial it is. So before I get into measurement of DevRel, let's just talk about DevRel for one second. DevRel or developer advocate is a job title, but I'd argue that many people participate in developer relations and developer advocacy, even if they're not paid by a company. <coughs> Like me, <laughs> I don't get paid for this. In fact, some of the original DevRels never held that title at all. Probably the most iconic DevRel in my mind is a guy named Linus Torvalds. Linus is the creator of Linux, but he's not just a builder and an engineer. He has grown a sensational community around this product that he built that's now running basically the entire internet, the Linux operating system. Linus isn't the only example of a heavy hitting DevRel that may not have the title. A couple of other great examples are Kelsey Hightower and what he's done for Kubernetes, or Jeff Barr and what he's done for the AWS community. So fundamentally, a DevRel is an evangelist that can make content engage with communities and grow brand awareness with the goal of building a thriving community ecosystem. They do this on platforms like Twitter or LinkedIn or Twitch. They engage in Slack. They write blogs. You might see them on GitHub contributing to projects and documenting the type of work that they're doing. There's forums, there's Reddit. I could keep listing all the communities, which by the way, is kind of part of the problem. Product users and developers are spread all over the internet and they all have communication mediums that they prefer to use. You really have to be able to monitor everywhere your users are to get a full picture of how your community is growing, developing, and the impact that these DevRel teams have on that growth. I've talked to friends who are in developer relations roles and I've been asking them, how do you measure the work that you're doing? I've gotten some really interesting answers. Some are using spreadsheets. I've talked to somebody who mentioned maybe writing a Python script that can capture various view counts. Even still, knowing the number of views doesn't necessarily convert to community growth. So I've been researching tools to try to solve this problem. In my research, I found there's not a lot of great tools that do this right now, but one promising one that I found is called Common Room. You plug it into all of your various social media for like a company and it pulls information about your community, about your developer relations teams and gives you data and analytics so you can identify those advocates and those influencers and how they're positively or negatively affecting levels of engagement in your community. I'm a former sales engineer. So another aspect that I found really interesting to the tool is that it can actually plug into CRMs like Salesforce or HubSpot to correlate community activity with data that's stored inside of a CRM. I think that's huge because if you look forward, imagine how incredible it would be for sales teams to really know when somebody in one of their accounts is engaging in an online community that they may not be speaking to already. But also I think over time, just like we don't wanna to talk to salespeople when we buy a car or a camera or an instrument or some new expensive item, I don't think that customers really want to talk to salespeople to make a technology decision. And so I think over time, 
it's very possible that a majority of technology decisions and consumption are made entirely based on organic online resource that's influenced by communities more so than working with sales reps and sales engineer to learn about a product and be sold on a solution. To me, that seems obvious because if you look at what's happened in the consumer good space, human beings obviously don't like talking to salespeople. We prefer to do our own research and make our own choices. At least I do. And I don't see why that couldn't scale to the enterprise. It's a human behavior thing. And I don't think that consumer behavior and business behavior are as different as you might think. Business behavior lags behind consumer behavior by a number of years generally, but I think over time, it becomes more of a reflection of what we do as humans in our individual purchases. Does that even make any sense? It makes sense to me. All right, the problem is these teams are probably effective, but it's difficult to correlate that effectiveness with real data. I found a tool called Common Room that I thought was pretty cool. I'm actually in the process of plugging all of my accounts into it right now because I'm kind of interested to see all the initiatives that I'm working on and, and the impact that it has across various platforms. That's just what I found. I'm curious what you think. If you're in developer relations or community management, what type of tools are you using to solve this problem? I know some people write narrative documents to prove their effectiveness, which I think is interesting, but the data is there across social platforms. So I think it'll be more interesting once we have all the real data so we can really understand online ecosystems better and connect all of these dots, not by warm and fuzzies or documents or anecdotes, but with real actual data. So anyway, what are you using? Throw it in the chat if somehow you're a DevRel and you stumbled across this video. I'd love to know what's working for you and your teams. Or if this is a problem that you have that you've been exploring ways to solve. My name is Trevor Spires. Subscribe to my channel or follow me on LinkedIn or Twitter if you'd like to see more from me. I do videos like this and provide general commentary on the tech industry. Would love to have you follow along. And until next time, take it easy.